I talk a lot in my videos about Shortcuts. Shortcuts is an automation platform that I truly believe is the backbone to working efficiently on an iPad or even an iPhone. I've made a few videos about how to build shortcuts that I'll link in the description below if you're curious. But one part of shortcuts that I haven't really talked a lot about is shortcuts automation. Now this is to get shortcuts to run automatically in the background or to run when certain triggers are met. When talking about shortcuts, this is the view that you're probably used to seeing. This is where all my shortcuts live. But there's this button right over here for automations. Now you can see right here, these are all the automations I have on my iPad. Uh, the automations that live on your iPad and iPhone are different. They are per device. They don't sync back and forth, which I find to be a good thing because a lot of these automations, I don't want to run on the opposite device or I don't want them to run on both devices. So I, I personally really like that. To create a new one, we just hit this plus button right up here. And then there's two different kinds of automation. There's personal automation and home automation. Personal automations is stuff that runs on device. So your iPhone or iPad, this is personal to you. And home automation, stuff that runs in your home. So it may affect other people that are in your house. So let's go ahead and create a new personal automation. Now, these are all of the triggers right here. When these parameters are met, they will trigger the shortcut to run. Now, there's two different ways that they run in the background. So ones like time of day, alarm, opening an app, things like that, they will run in the background when those parameters are met. So if I set something to run at 6 a.m., it'll just run that shortcut in the background if I tell it to. Others like arrive and leave before commute, uh, connecting to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth networks, they send a notification. And the reason why it does this is for security reasons. Like you don't want somebody to grab your phone and be like, hey, whenever they leave this location, you know, have it send me a message or something like that. You, you don't want that. So that's why there, there's two different kinds and you can kind of play around with these and figure out what is what. But these triggers are what determines when the shortcut runs. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through some of mine. So let's go ahead and get out of this. Okay, so here are the automations I have. And like I said, the iPhone and the iPad automations, they don't sync. So the iPhone is completely different from the iPad here. And I'll show you those in a bit, uh, but I wanna go through the iPad ones first because I think these are really interesting. So let's go at this first one right here. So the way this works is it runs at a time of day at 4 a.m. And then I have ask before running turned off. So this means it'll run automatically in the background. I don't have to tap on a notification and there's no manual interaction. If we tap on this section right here, we can see the shortcut. So the way this works is it goes through all my photos and finds the album winter landscape. Then it gets a random item from that album and then it sets it as the lock screen wallpaper. So let's go ahead and run this. Normally it would run at 4 a.m but you can see here, that's the image. Now, if we pull down right there, that is the my new lock screen wallpaper. So this runs at 4 a.m. every day. So I have a new wallpaper to kind of look at. This next one right here runs at 6 a.m. every day. And all, this one just actually has one action. So this one does use ask before running because I don't want it to run at 6 a.m. every day. Really, I just want the notification sitting in notification center when I'm ready to do it. And what this does is it runs my daily journal shortcut. So when I get to my iPad in the morning and kind of start working, I like to run my daily journal shortcut. I've talked about it in the past. I'll link to it in the description. But in this shortcut, I use every single morning. And what I like about this is I have the notification sitting in notification center when I get to my iPad. So it kind of reminds me to do it. And all I have to do is tap on that notification and it'll run that shortcut. When doing the daily journal shortcut, I really like having the paper-like on my iPad. What's great about the paper-like is it adds this texture to the screen. So when you're using the Apple Pencil with it, it feels like you're writing on paper. It adds friction and adds texture. And it's a really nice tool to have. So if you do anything with the Apple Pencil a lot, I highly recommend picking up a paper-like. I'll put uh, my link to where you can get one in the description below. This next one, I really like a lot. It's for audio devices. So the way this works is when it sees certain Bluetooth devices, so these two devices right here, my AirPods Max and my AirPods Pro, uh, when they connect to this iPad, it runs the shortcut. So I, I have to tap on this one because it is a Bluetooth one. So I get a notification, I tap on it, 
and it gives me this menu right here, music, podcast, or focus mode. This will run my music player shortcut, play a podcast, or run my focus mode shortcut. Really handy, really nice to have when you connect your AirPods and then you automatically just wanna start playing music or whatever. Then this last one right here is all about time tracking. So what this does is when any of these apps are open, so I have to scroll through here, but like LumaFusion, uh, Skype, Spark, um, I know Craft is a part of this. Any of those kind of apps that I use for work, what happens is it runs this shortcut right here. And basically this just checks to see if I have any sort of time tracking running. If it doesn't, it asks me to start time tracking, ask for the project and what the tag is, and then it just starts the time tracker. I personally like time tracking for keeping track of what I work on throughout the day. Um, I, I kind of find it helps keep me a little more focused on what I need to do. Uh, and this kind of helps remind me to do the time tracking. Now, one thing I wanna mention really quick is I can't link to these automations themselves. So I can't give you the fact that this runs at 4 a.m. every single day. What I can do is I can link to the shortcuts in the description below, and then you can recreate them by using this run shortcut action and then just putting in the proper shortcut. So here's my iPhone automations. You might notice there's a few triggers that aren't on the iPad. So these are things like uh, workouts, sleep tracking, car play, uh, NFC tags, uh, low power mode, stuff the iPad doesn't have. But let's go ahead and take a look at my automations here. So the first one will look really familiar. It's just the set wallpaper one. It just pulls from a different album here. You can get portrait mode wallpapers, even though that's not a portrait mode wallpaper, but it's at a high resolution, so it works for portrait mode. Then we can kind of get into some automations that don't work on the iPad. So right here is set watch face. So what's really cool is on the iPhone, there are shortcut actions to do stuff with the Apple Watch that aren't on the iPad because the Apple Watch doesn't pair with the iPad, it pairs with the iPhone. So this one at 5 a.m. every day, and again, I have asked before running turned off so it'll run automatically. It sets the watch face to my infograph modular face. So this face right here. These two basically do the same thing. At 6 a.m. and at 6 p.m., again, this one asked before running because I want a notification. It asked me to log my blood sugar. I'm a type one diabetic, uh, so I like to make, you know track my blood sugar because I, I like living and I have a meter that does all that, but I don't like the way it does all the tracking. I like the way health kit works. So it basically asks for my blood glucose, what the value is, was it before or after a meal time, and then it automatically logs the date. So I get a notification at 6 a.m. and at 6 p.m. to run this one. Now, this one, 5 p.m. one, is another set watch face, but it doesn't do the infograph modular, it does the California face. And my California face, I like kind of as like an evening, like relax, kind of cool down watch face. So this next one right here is when any alarm is stopped. So basically I only use one alarm and it's when I wake up in the morning. And this one has asked before running turned off, so it'll happen automatically. And the way this works is it turns my bedroom lamp to 22%, waits 60 seconds, then turns on my living room lamp and my bedroom lamp to 100%, basically to kind of force me to get out of bed. These next two basically will change the watch face. So when I end a workout, it'll go back to the infograph modular face. But when I start a workout, it goes to the activity digital face. This last one right here is whenever I scan the NFC sticker attached to my desk, and what this does is it turns on my office lights, sets playback destination to the home pods in my office, and then plays some music. There's a lot you can do with shortcuts automation. If you guys do something really interesting with it, let me know in the comments below. I'd be really curious to hear what you all do with it. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Like I mentioned, I'll put more shortcuts videos in the description. Have a great day.